Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be going through some of the common misconceptions of being a wildlife biologist. I think a lot of us kind of fell victim to looking at the people in popular culture. Steve Irwin, Jane Goodall, and like thinking the field is like doing those jobs and it is truly not very reflective of what it's actually like to work in this field. So I'll be counting down eight misconceptions of what it is like to be a wildlife biologist. This one is like kind of an unfortunate truth is that when you graduate from your degree, whether that's a master's, bachelor's, or a PhD, you are kind of at the bottom of the barrel. And unfortunately, the most like exciting, fun, high paying jobs are not gonna go to people who have no experience or very little experience outside of the academic world. Expect like at least your first few years to be working your way up the job ladders. It's probably gonna be closer to like my first job after graduation where I was like working on permits for environmental projects. And if you do get like a really exciting glamorous job right on graduation, it's probably a seasonal job. That's another really common one. Number seven, working in oil and gas or forestry means that you are selling your soul. <laughs> I've probably even said this before, but as someone who has worked in the past in oil and gas, working in oil and gas and working in industry is a really kind of tough place to be if you are an environmentalist, which probably most of us are getting into this career. It doesn't mean that you suddenly have to get rid of all your scientific morals and your integrity to work for these companies. You are still being held to scientific integrity. You still have to work with truth in your work. You still have to provide mitigation and recommendations in your professional opinion most of the time on how a certain development is going to impact wildlife. In some ways, being that boots on the ground person and working with integrity and refusing to be swayed by money or pressure and having one of the good ones uh, in those positions can actually be hugely beneficial to what's actually happening on the ground. Having professional integrity is totally possible while working within industry. Number six, that zoologists or wildlife biologists only work in zoos. So if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know that that's not the case. I've never worked at a zoo before. I mean, I guess I like obviously see the connection is like zoology has zoo in it in the same way that like fisheries biologists don't just work like at a fish hatchery. Zoology is just more referring to the general study of wildlife and it doesn't have anything to do with working in a zoo. I don't actually know anyone personally who works in a zoo. I don't even think there's any zoos anywhere near where I live. So most wildlife biologists and zoologists do not work in zoos. Number five is you're always going to be low paid. So a lot of times in this field, the jobs actually will start off really low paid. I think like my very first job, I made like $11 an hour. So it definitely starts off like quite low. You have to recognize that when you really start off in a technical field, like a scientific field like this, you need so much hand holding because school doesn't teach you even close to everything. You learn so much practical experience in the field that when you start off, you really need someone there, a manager to tell you and teach you how to do everything. It makes sense that when you're not quite independent as a biologist yet, you're not going to be making very much money because so much oversight is needed over your work and review of your work until you get to the point where you reach that professional level and you can work independently. And then once you reach that level and you do not need the level of senior review that you do when you are more junior level, your pay is gonna skyrocket. I guess I say that with like the realization that this is never gonna be like higher paying than like working in the engineering field or computer science. Like such is just the way of wildlife biology is that we're never gonna be rich. I think that once you have like five years under your belt of work, you should be looking at earning anywhere from $60,000 up. And then the more senior level people with PhDs, 20 years of experience can reach up well into the six figures. Number four, you need an advanced degree. So this one's a little bit of a contentious one. And the times are changing where a bachelor's is starting to slowly be phased out as standard for education uh, for wildlife biologists. And it's more so being turned to like a master's degree 
to become a wildlife biologist. However, you definitely don't need a PhD to get into this field, and in many ways, a PhD really should be reserved for if you're like especially dedicated to research because it really doesn't raise your eventual salary or career opportunities that high. So I guess this one has a bit of a caveat is you definitely don't need an advanced degree. So what I recommend is that you do your bachelor's degree and then you kind of tough it out in the world for a year or two and just see how it goes. If you are having no success finding a wildlife job or you're stuck in a dead end job with no chance of moving up, then you can go back and get your master's and then now hopefully you have a few years of like some sort of practical job experience under your belt. So when you graduate, you actually come out with some job experience. So I think that's kind of the best way to do it. At least try to get by without a master's degree and then you can always go back to school if you need it. Number three, you only study one or two animals or one or two single species. So this one's a really common one and I totally get why people think this. Unless you are in some like specialized research niche or you are working in the nonprofit world and your nonprofit is like a singular species focused, most of the time you will not only be studying one species. Most of the jobs I've worked have been just more general wildlife biologists, so I'm studying like every single species. Definitely with a focus on species at risk because that generally tends to get more funding and money thrown towards it. But a lot of times the really important part about wildlife biology is incorporating in all of the species that are in a specific area and their habitats and how they work within their habitats and the ecological concepts that kind of connect all of that. And I never worked on just one singular species with the exception of uh, you know, one research program I worked on and when I was in like wildlife rehabilitation, even that I didn't work with one species. So it's it's not very common to work with only one species ever. Number two, you are always in the field. So this is a common one and I definitely am a bit guilty of maybe spreading this misconception with like the videos that I post on YouTube because I usually post like so much about the field mostly because watching me do office work is not that exciting but there is definitely a huge part of office work for most field jobs and I'll get into that in a second so office work is really important for field jobs because you actually need to like have some concept of what you're doing and analysis of the data that you're gathering if you're just gathering data and like not uploading it analyzing it running statistical analysis on it like it's not going to be super useful. So a lot of times wildlife biologists do spend a decent amount of time in the office. If you're going more of the research, the PhD direction, honestly, you're gonna be spending even more time in the office outside of maybe some short field stints because the more responsibility you build up into this field and the more you have to do with management of the data, the less time you're actually in the field gathering it. And that's a really interesting thing that kind of comes into play once you've kind of reached year five of your career is you're like, well, to move up into management, I need to be in the office more, but what if I love the field? But the field doesn't give me like the power and the management skills. If you do want to stay in the field 100% of the time and that's all you're interested in is staying in the field, you can do it, but it's gonna limit your one, your pay, and then two, your job opportunities. The way I'm thinking about it is like when I was working 100% in the field, I was working as a consultant in a consulting firm, but I was the field biologist. So I would actually send all of my data to be analyzed to a biologist that was sitting in the office. So in some ways they got to do a lot of the cool like data analysis and recommendations for mitigation. If you're really wanting to get into that more complex technical data analysis and report writing and analyzing trends in your data, then you're gonna be spending some time in the office. And misconception number one, that you touch animals. This has to be like the number one misconception. The only jobs that work really like hands on touching animals are like wildlife rehabilitation, wildlife rescue, captive animal management like zoos, and veterinary medicine. Being a wildlife biologist that does research or consulting or industry, like the only chance that you're gonna have hands on with like most wildlife species is like if you're tranquilizing it and installing a GPS collar or maybe taking a blood sample from a tranquilized animal. Um, I guess also too fisheries biologists tend to actually touch the fish 
that they're collecting, if that counts uh, as hands-on wildlife interaction. I just keep thinking of a few more like small examples. Um, bird banding is another one where you're touching the bird very briefly and installing the band before letting it go. It's quite harmful to touch and interact with a wild animal in most cases. So that is absolutely minimized to only the essential personnel touching the animal and I even have some problems about like the wildlife being tranquilized and then like passed around so that every person can take a photo like it really needs to be minimized in all senses and I think you have to realize that if you are truly craving like touching an animal and you are not like rehabilitating the animal or it's not essential touching is to re-examine that belief of why you need to touch that animal even though it hurts the animal itself most of the time to be touched. If you're looking to get into this field because you really want to like cuddle with lions and tigers because you watch Tiger King, uh, I would highly look at re-examining that belief because it is not going to happen unless you are like a veterinarian and cuddling is like doing surgery. <laughs> if you want to know more about careers and getting into that, I would recommend my career series playlist, which I will link to above and in the description box below. Hopefully everyone is staying safe in these crazy times. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you guys next time.